best music. The station with the... My Lord was with me. And he has taken me step by step back to good health. Won't you come along this journey with me? Hi, my name is Dr. Deborah Williams, and I'm here to give you a word of encouragement, your health tip, and a prayer. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Good morning, good morning. I am in a warm, beautiful Jamaica. And Claremont just told us it's very cold in Canada. So my precious friend Claremont, I wish I could bottle some of the Jamaican sun and send it to you in cold Canada. But nonetheless, we can stay warm with the spirit of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Claremont. Let us have Bible in hand. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much. You are indeed our protector, our caregiver. We thank you once again for Jesus Christ, your precious son, your darling son, your beloved son that you gave to, to, to mankind to pay the price for our sins, to redeem us with his own blood. Now we are covered under his robe of righteousness. We choose Jesus this morning, Father. We choose life. In his name we pray with thanksgiving and love. Amen. So my darling friends, I was reading a book about Jesus over the weekend. And he kept referring to Jesus as the darling of his father. So I call him my darling. So he's your darling. He's my darling. He's our high priest. He is our advocate. He is our redeemer. His blood has been shed to set us free. So this morning, we're going into the Holy Writ, the scripture, Genesis Revelation. So I want to take you to the end of the journey. The reason Dr. Debs is always so happy is because I always have this in my heart. Yeah. I have about five Bibles in my house, right? Five Bibles. Wherever I go, in whatever handbag I have, I have a Bible with me. And if I can't open the Bible, I have it on my phone. So I I, I, I fill my, my frontal lobe. Yes. Here, the seat of reason and judgment with the word of God. In Psalm 119, 105, the Bible says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. All of us must strive to get there. You got to push to get there. Study to show thyself approved. Now in Revelation 22, um, I'm going to pick out some verses. This is a very, very special to encourage you this morning. As we dig into our word of encouragement, our health tip and a prayer. Revelation 22, the theme is Jesus is coming. My brothers and sisters, he is coming. He is coming. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life. Now, we saw the tree of life in Genesis. Here we are now seeing the tree of life but again in Revelation, which bear 12 manner of fruits and yielded our fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation, even in the earth made new. The leaves of the tree are still for the healing of the nation. Verse 3, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads, and there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophet sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Seven and last. Behold, says Jesus, behold, it's in red. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the saying of the prophecy of this book. Praise the Lord. So here we have our, our commander in chief, our king of kings and lord of lords, making a clear promise and declaration to all of us. He's coming soon. So we see things in you 
human time. But God doesn't see things in human time. In his eyes, it is soon. So keep it in your mind. My Lord is coming soon. Whatever is going on around the world, you know, whether it's pestilence or it's snowstorms or earthquakes or famines and wars, our Lord is coming soon. And he will be putting an end to all of this. In verse 12, I'm just picking out Jesus sayings in Revelation 22. In verse 12, he says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. You can't be rewarded for what you haven't done. He says he's coming to give the reward as our work shall be. What is our work? To spread the gospel of Jesus Christ by precept and example. Show the world that God has a people on this earth filled with his Holy Spirit who worship him and not worship Satan. The devil wants worship. Do you know that? Do you want me to prove it? Turn with me to Matthew 4. Matthew 4. And I want to look at the, 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 the temptations of Jesus. The last temptation in Matthew chapter 4, verse 8. Uh, again, the devil taketh him up unto an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And Satan said unto Jesus, and said it unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. No, it's Satan is trying to get God, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, to worship him. Who do we think we are? The devil is out for worship. It, this entire controversy is about who you're worshiping. And Jesus, our darling, Jesus said unto Satan, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Praise the Lord. So we are excited. We are happy. The controversy is coming to an end. We know how it ends. We know the future. Keep your hearts and minds fixed on Jesus. He is leading us through his word. Hallelujah. Now, for our health tip this morning, I'm going to take you to another PowerPoint. Claremont has gotten me into this PowerPoint thing, and I'm, I'm enjoying it. I, I, you know, I spend a weekend where I should normally be relaxing, and I'm there preparing PowerPoint presentations for Claremont's program on Monday, but I enjoy doing it because I enjoy researching. And I enjoy sharing with people. So this morning, as the request came in last week from one of our listeners, we are looking at H. pylori, right? It's a bacterial infection. So I'm going to do a screen share. And I'm going to take you through a PowerPoint on this whole topic of, um, of H. pylori. So let us open this up. Uh, one second, please. Let me just open my PowerPoint. Close that down. Okay, let's see here. Screen. Share. All right, are you seeing it, Claremont? Yes, I'm seeing you, but I'm not seeing the screen share yet. Go again. Screen share. Click on that. All right. You should be seeing it now. Are you seeing it now? Yes, we are. Wonderful, good. So, Helicobacter pylori. I have seen two, two diseases that has caused people to come in my office and roll on the ground like a baby cry. One is kidney stones, as I told you guys weeks ago. The second one is H. pylori infection. It is such an excruciatingly painful attack on your body that these people literally cry for death. Seriously, crying for death. Now, my focus when I do these presentations, Behold, says the Lord, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Jeremiah 32, verse 27. So, you guys know I'm a medical missionary. And I work with sick people across the world, right? And oftentimes they will come to me and say, Dr. Debs, doctor has given up on us. The doctor said, they have tried everything and nothing is working. My response always is, look to Jesus. Exodus 15 verse 26, he said, I am the Lord that he led thee. And here we have him telling us in Jeremiah 13 verse 27, Behold, I am the Lord. I am Adonai. I am creator. I am the God, Elohim of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? In other words, you are here listening to Dr. Dead this morning, 
you're suffering from the pains of H. pylori bacterial infection, there's nothing too hard for God. Let us discuss this morning what it is and how we can address it using natural remedies. And better yet, how do we build up our bodies so our bodies can defend ourselves against this um, infection? All right. Now, Exodus 15, verse 26, I am the Lord that healeth thee. As Christians, you've got to get it into your mind that Jesus Christ is a doctor. He is the balm of Gilead. He is the great physician, right? I am the Lord. But please look carefully at Exodus 15, verse 26. There are four conditions that you have to meet before you can come to the Lord and say, Lord, heal me, right? If thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight. And will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will, says God. He the I will, God. Put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. I am the Lord that he did be. I love him. He's my everything. He's my doctor. So, H. pylori. No, Helicobacter pylori are bacteria. Well, it's really bacterium, right? Bacterium is singular, while the bacteria is plural that infect the lining of your stomach. Now, according to the 1998 CDC report, these bacteria are responsible for up to 80% of gastric ulcers and 90% of duodenal ulcers. So it's a bacteria that you need to pay close attention to. Okay? It can really take you out. And many persons have ulcers now and they don't know that they're actually suffering from attack from the H. pylori bacterial infection. Now, it can affect the stomach and it can also affect the duodenum, right? That's a small part of your small intestine right coming out of the, of the stomach. Now, that area of your stomach, can, it connects the stomach and it helps to further digest food coming from your stomach. So when you have ulcers in the duodenum, it's very difficult for you to absorb um, vitamins and your minerals. That's where the carbohydrates, the plastic proteins finish their final digestion. So if you have ulcers in that area, it's very difficult for you to absorb nutrients. So you find yourself losing weight and you're feeling the pain and you don't know what's wrong. Chances are you have a um, H. pylori infection. So H. pylori is a type of bacteria. The helico, which is the first part of helicobacter, means spiral, which indicates that the bacteria has a spiral shape, as you can see on the screen, right? They have a spiral shape, and that spiral shape helps them to go deep into the lining of the stomach and cause the ulcers that can cause the pain. These germs can enter your body and live in your digestive tract. After many years, they can cause sores called ulcers in the lining of the stomach or the upper part of your small intestine, the duodenum. For some people, an infection can actually lead to stomach cancer. So my brothers and my sisters, listen up carefully this morning because this is not a joke, this is a serious thing we're dealing with, right? Now, H. pylori are adapted to live in the harsh, acidic environment of the stomach. Now, you know that in your body, your stomach is very acidic, right? It's like three point something on the pH scale. It has to be acidic because of the hydrochloric acid that is needed to break down the protein. But this particular bacteria can adapt and adjust itself that it can exist in such a very acidic environment. These bacteria can change the environment around them and reduce its acidity. So your, your stomach can be so populated with this bacteria, it changes the acidity in your stomach so that it can survive while it is destroying you. The spiral shape of H. pylori allows them to penetrate the stomach lining where they are protected by mucus and your body's immune system are not able to reach them. The bacteria can interfere with your immune response and ensure that they are not destroyed. Now you tell me, how can a bacteria do that? This, 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 this world that we're living in is so amazing. This is why we've got to stay focused on Jesus because there are things that we will never understand. When I was spending the weekend doing the research, again, from one scientist to the next, they all differ in terms of their opinions of this thing. So let's just go back a little into the history of where this came from, because I found this very interesting. Now, in the 1980s, we had two Australian doctors. One was called Marshall, and one was called Robin, Robin um, Warren Curry, right? 
And there was a paper called ulcer. The culprit is H. pylori. Now, when the paper came out, the hypothesis came out, the medical world at the time laughed at the scorn. They said the reason why there are so many ulcers in the stomach or the duodenum is because of a bacteria. And at the time, the entire medical world laughed at the scorn. No, when I saw, I laughed now when I saw this because I said, wow, I wonder if 10 years from now, if we're still alive, when we look back at what they're doing now with COVID, we're going to laugh and say, what kind of madness were they doing? Scientists will try their best to understand what's going on, but they're not God. We have to rely on God to lead us and guide us. Anyway, these two scientists came up with their hypothesis. It was rejected by the medical world and they persisted with their research. Now, their research led to an understanding that the spiral shape of the bacterium H. pylori allows it to penetrate the stomach's mucus lining, where it secretes an enzyme that generates substances to neutralize the stomach acidity. This weakens the stomach's protective mucus, making the tissue more susceptible to the damaging effect of acid, leading to the development of sores and ulcers. I remember a young man that came into my office when he was 12. Oh my, for months he had gone to every doctor. They kept giving him antacid and antibiotics and the, the, the mother was crying, the child was crying, nothing was working. We had to completely change his diet and work with him slowly. Another woman came in, another child came in, and that's how they come in one by one, H. pylori infection. H. pylori also prompted the stomach to produce even more acid, further damaging the stomach lining. So these two doctors came up with this um, hypothesis. Now in 1984, Dr. Marshall, they're from Australia, Dr. Marshall was trying to convict the medical world that it is the H. pylori bacteria that's causing all the stomach ulcers. And so back in those days, if you had a stomach ulcer and you had the symptoms, the doctors would give you antiacid and tell you that it's because of stress why you're having the problem with the stomach, right? But Dr. Marshall said, no, it's a bacteria called H. pylori. Because they wouldn't listen to him, Dr. Marshall decided that he's going to take his body and become the guinea pig. So what Dr. Marshall actually did, he actually got a mixture of the H. pylori bacteria and drank it, right? He drank it himself to prove. Well, after drinking it, a few days after, he came down with the infection. He came down with the vomiting and the inflamed stomach in his stomach. Then he went and took antibiotic and the symptoms went away. Now, when he did this and he came out again to the public, to the to the medical world to show, listen, I have used myself as a guinea pig to prove that the stomach ulcers is coming from a bacteria called H. pylori. It still took years for the medical community to be entirely convinced of the link between peptic ulcers and H. pylori. So there are many of you out there now who are having peptic ulcers and you're going to your doctor and they're giving you all kind of medication because they don't understand. Still to this day, they're rejecting that the, the, the ulcers are coming from the bacteria. Now, in 1984, the National Institute of Health held a conference on the cause of peptic ulcers. There was scientific consensus that H. pylori caused most peptic ulcers and that patients should be treated with antibiotics. Ten years! It took ten years for them to come up with a consensus, even though the evidence was there. Why it's so like COVID to me, but I pray it won't be 10 years. Now, in 1986, the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, approved the first antibiotic that could be used to treat patients with peptic ulcers. Nevertheless, my brothers and my sisters, the link between H. pylori and peptic ulcers was not sufficiently communicated to healthcare providers. So not because your, your, your doctor has a sign on the wall saying that they are this specialist and that specialist. It does not mean that they have all knowledge and that they are clear in terms of accepting how certain diseases should be, should be treated. In fact, it says 75% of patients with peptic ulcers in the late 1990s were still being prescribed antacid, which was making it worse, and advised to change their diet and reduce their stress even with all the evidence that was there. Boy, I tell you, science is amazing. No, in 1997, 
the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, alongside other public health organizations began an intensive educational campaign um, to convince the public and the healthcare providers that peptic ulcers are a curable condition requiring treatment with antibiotics. Almost 20 years after the evidence came out. And then guess what happened? In 2005, both Dr. Marshall and Dr. Warren won the Nobel Prize because of their discovery that it was the bacterium Helicobacter pylori causes gastric and peptic ulcers. How many thousands of people around the world suffered for that 20 years while scientists were debating the issue? Are we seeing the same thing today? Of course, we're seeing the same thing today. It's no different. It's no different. Now, what is your medical doctor saying now about treatment of his pylori? Because I'm pulling these things from their website. Listen to this. Your doctor says, our doctors are saying, Treatment for H. pylori infection is challenging, says your doctor. And the patients who have come to me also, they came to me with the same thing. They had been to their doctor. They had given them antibiotics. They had changed it. They had given them antiacid, and they had changed it, and they were suffering still. But your doctor says it usually involves taking a combination of three or four medications multiple times a day for 14 days. And... Raising antibiotic resistance has made it increasingly difficult to cure the infection. Why are we having so much antibiotic resistance? Well, the meat that you're all eating out there, they're pumping the meat with antibiotics. So when you consume the animal flesh, you are getting antibiotics indirectly. So when you come down with H. pylori and go see your doctor and they gave you antibiotics, your body's already so pumped up with antibiotics because of your diet and the consumption of animal flesh, which is already being fed with antibiotics, it only gets worse for you. Your doctor will factor in what the antibiotic resistant pattern is like in your region, as well as any drug allergies you may have, and many persons are allergic to these antibiotics and other medications, right? And they will try and change the drug and change the drug and see which one your body will respond to. Is there a better way? My answer is yes, there is a better way. Another important consideration, says your doctor, is what antibiotics you have taken in the past for other infections. It is best to avoid ones you have already used often, as it is more likely that H. pylori will be resistant to these. This is the confusion. This is the confusion. This is why so many of you are going around from the diet suffering from H. pylori, because there is so much confusion now, because too much antibiotic is being given out to people. Now, what are some of the side effects of antibiotics? Well, a diarrhea, bloating and um, indigestion, abdominal pain, loss of appetite, just generally sick, right? Itchy skin, rashes, coughing, and sometimes life-threatening allergic reaction. So persons who take too much antibiotics after a while, it, it creates super bugs in your stomach because anti means against, and biotic means life. It's trying to kill the bacteria, but it's killing you in the process. Is there a better way? The answer is yes. Now, how does H. pylori spread? Well, it spreads from infected family members, crowded living conditions, poor hygiene, right? So even this thing now with washing your hands and washing your hands, it's a, that's a very important factor to do, right? Poor sanitation, fecal contamination of water supplies, right? And of course, health professionals. You go into a hospital, the nurse went to the bathroom, she didn't wash her hands properly, she came out and she touched you, right? You went to a, a restaurant and they're in there fixing a nice green salad and they went to the bathroom and came back, didn't wash their hands properly, take up the lettuce and then you eat it. <laughs> you know, clear much, I always tell my friends, you know, I prefer to eat at home and on the road because I don't even know what's going on in many of these places, right? We don't know how hygienic these people are. Now, as I went on and did the research to see other ways of H. pylori spreading, it mentioned animal contamination. And there's a little debate there because some scientists say it can't be spread by animals. Some, some said it can be spread by animals, right? Now, I found a lovely video called, uh, by a doctor, Stanley um, Follow. Follow is right there. If you just type in what you see, Dr. Stanley, he has a lovely YouTube video. 
um, on um, H. pylori, and he gives some really graphic pictures and show you into the stomach or what is doing down there. You can check out that later on if you want more details on it, right? Now, what are some of the symptoms? An ache or burning pain in your abdomen. Abdominal pain that, that gets worse when your stomach is empty at night or a few hours after me. So normally the pain clears up once your stomach is empty. Clear sign that you have H. pylori. The pain is usually described as a gnawing pain and it may come and go, right? The bloating, the nausea, loss of appetite, frequent burping, and of course, unexplained weight loss. If you have six of these, chances are you have H. pylori. Now, when the H. pylori infection gets into your stomach, 80% of persons who have it are what we call asymptomatic. They have the bacteria is there, but it's causing you no problem, right? Because they're generally healthy. So they're not feeding the bacteria. It's there, but it's not causing any problems. But then some persons know it can lead to what we call gastritis, right? Anything that with this means inflammation. And then we can have the gastric or the duodenal ulcers. And lastly, it can lead to gastric cancer. So it's not something you want to play with, right? Especially when I saw in my research that gastric cancer is the third leading cause of cancer death in the world with more than 1 million cases per year and almost 800,000 deaths per year. So we, we don't want to be in that 1%. 1% sounds small until you multiply it and realize we're talking about over a million people per year coming down with this thing and over 800,000 dying. So we have to try our best to avoid being in that um, number. Now, how do we get diagnosed? Well, H. pylori infection can be detected by submitting a stool sample, right? Or they can do what we call a endoscope. If you have ulcers, they put a little camera down, down through your mouth and carry it right down into your stomach and they can test to see if you have H. pylori, if you have stomach ulcers, and they can do a tissue biopsy. They used to do a blood test, but they have stopped doing it because the blood test is bring up more what we call false positives. So they have stopped doing the blood test now. But a simple stool test can tell your doctor if you have the H. pylori bacteria. Now, who is at risk for H. pylori? Children are more likely to develop H. pylori simply because they're always playing together. You know, they're always putting things in their mouth. So you have to watch your children, teach them proper hygiene, you know, washing their hands, washing their plates, not eating from each other at school, just general, you know, wiping down things, um, wiping off their toys, etc., etc. Right? Now, the, the other groups, persons living in developing countries with poor sanitation, and we've already gone through this, right? Even persons who are taking medication for peptic ulcers can end up coming down with this issue. Let's talk about my world now. So I've given you what the medical doctors say. In my world, what are some of the natural remedies? So remember, you know, about 50% of the people in the world have H. pylori, but they are asymptomatic. It's not causing any damage. We are mostly bacteria than we are human, you know. Our bodies are filled with healthy bacteria. As long as we keep the body healthy and the immune system going, we live together with them and there's no harm. The use of conventional treatments like antibiotics can be difficult for some people. It's possible to experience negative side effects like nausea, diarrhea, loss of appetite, weight loss. Some people are resistant to the antibiotics for reasons we gave before. So we want to jump into what are some of the natural things that we can use. Probiotic. Pro mean for biotic mean life, right? So we go to the health food store, get a bottle of probiotic. And the probiotic will help to keep your stomach healthy, feed the healthy bacteria. And you want to stay on a diet high in natural fiber. So we call them prebiotic, right? Prebiotic, high fiber food like yam and potato, right? Um, breadfruit and your fruits. Honey. Honey has shown to be antibacterial and it is, it's, it's a very good aid against H. pylori. But there's a special honey called Manuka honey, which is very, very effective. And I've used it with almost all of my clients with H. pylori. It works very well. We have olive oil, we have licorice root. I can't go into all the details. If you need details, you have to contact my office. But these are some of the general um, natural remedies that we can use. The, the broccoli sprouts and the garlic. Garlic is a natural anti-inflammatory. Garlic has over 66 different elements in it. 
that helps to heal the body and to boost your immune system, right? Then we have flax seed and chia seed for omega-3. Our berries and our cruciferous vegetables, our broccoli, our cabbage, our cauliflower, um, those are excellent for helping your body to be, have a good immune system and help your stomach to fight off these things. So you are causing the problem to get escalated because of how you're damaging your digestive system, all this junk food, right? I say sweet in the mouth and bitter in the belly, right? So we want to avoid caffeine, car um, carbonated beverages, all those pickled foods with vinegar, stay away from them. All those excessively spicy foods, right? Highly processed, low grain, um, low grains that have been processed, so white flour, white sugar, and all these biscuits, all the processed sugars. We have all the dairy, the store-bought bread, biscuits, chips, bake your own. Get my recipe book and learn to bake your own bread and biscuits, people. All flesh, including the fish, stay away from it. All canned foods, the sausage and the processed meat. If you want to have a healthy um, stomach environment and not come down with the issues of being impacted by stomach ulcers, this is how we prevent the stomach ulcers. Avoid all this acid-forming food. Avoid this ice cream. You can make something that we call nice cream. You freeze the bananas, you freeze the berries, right? Get some almond milk. You blend them together and you have lovely nice cream. Not this dairy thing that they make in these factories poisoning our children, right? So we, again, we have herbs like garlic and yarrow and many plant-based um, substances that we can use as natural antibiotics, right? In the pharmaceutical world, they will isolate chemical constituents. But in the plant world, you find, for example, the garlic has 33 sulfur compounds, 17 amino acids, dozens of other compounds designed the way God designed it to keep your body in good health. So we have 16 top antibiotic herbs, right? Can't go through it right now, but you can you can um, get the video later on after I'm finished and you can go and do your own research on these herbs. Excellent natural antibiotic to get rid of any excessive buildup of bad bacteria in your stomach. You want to stay on the new start program. Your nutrition, proper nutrition is very essential for good health. Your exercise, your water, your sunlight, temperance, air, rest, trust in God, right? Especially it's vitamin D from the sun, very important. If you're in Canada now, like Claremont, it's, and it's very cold and there's hardly any sun. Make, get your vitamin D supplement at the health food store. It's very important, right? The decline of civilization. God warned us, my brothers and sisters, as we wrap up. Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel. It applies to us in the last days. For the Lord has a legal case for the inhabitants of the land. Because there's no faithfulness, no steadfast love, no dependability or loyalty or kindness or knowledge of God from personal experience with him in the land. There is false swearing of oaths, deception, broken faith, murder, stealing, and adultery. They employ violence so that one act of bloodshed follows another act of bloodshed. It sounds like last night news, don't it? Therefore, because of the wickedness of man, the land is mourning, and everyone who lives in it shall languish in tragic suffering, grow weak, and deteriorate. That's what we are now experiencing. Together, the animals are languishing. Human beings are languishing. The birds are languishing. Even the fish of the sea are all disappearing because of the wickedness of man. But remember, the Lord is coming back to make it new again. But until he comes back, we must stay on the new start pathway. Get off all these flesh, right? The amount of worms and the amount of issues that they're finding out with the animal flesh is causing too much problems in our bodies, right? So... And again, I can't go into these in detail, so our time is almost up, but look at the screen, and when I'm finished, you can always play it back and read the slides, right? Get rid of all this processed food, all this sugar, 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 highly processed, no nutrients, empty calories, no good to your body, right? Reason from cause to effect. So the curse caused they shall not come. H. pylori, stomach ulcers. It is things that you're eating and how you're living that's causing a bacteria that could be there and do no harm to all of a sudden become so harmful. And the cause which I knew not, I searched out. So you are you don't have to search out. We have brought the information to you, right? So you can do your part in ensuring that you don't come down with stomach ulcers. And if you have it right now, here in Dr. Debs, there are natural ways to heal it by the grace of God. Praise the Lord. All right, now. So let us pray to close.
Father, we thank you so much for this human body, this body that you have made. We thank you, Lord, that you have not left us here to the scourge of Satan. We thank you that even though there's so much bacteria and pathogens and viruses on the planet, that we can live here with them and we don't have to get hurt by them because you have built an amazing immune system that destroys these things. But we have to feed our bodies properly. We have to live in a way to boost our immunity so that we can be in good health and prosper, even as our souls shall prosper. So thank you for another Monday morning. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to share with your people. May you bless your sons and your daughters. And may your name be glorified, magnified, and exalted. Is our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, <laughs> H. Pylori, now I know. Now I know. Um... But Dr. Debs, we're having quite a snowstorm over here. I, I think I need to go somewhere where it's warm. Oh, Jamaica, Jamaica, Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> Jamaica. It is really, really snowing. And people are sending me videos all the time to show me what's happening around uh, the GTA. I understand it's a, a part of um, Toronto, uh, Ontario area, into Quebec area as well that is having this kind of an issue. But, you know, we thank God for it anyways. We're alive. We can feel the cold. We can dig, dig the snuffle of the show and get some energy and heat back into our system for those of you who have driveways to travel. If not, you'll be dr digging yourself out of the cars and things like that that's going on right now. It's crazy. It's really crazy right now. But we thank God. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, the listener is very happy about that, and she really enjoys what you just shared. So thank you again. You're welcome. God bless you all. Stay God warm and be safe. You too. God bless. Have a good day. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Dr. Deborah Williams on our uh, Praise Life Morning Show. Thank you so much for sticking and staying with us. Hope that was inf informative for you and that you will take note. If you always can go back to Streaming Praise Radio, 